Okay, welcome back to another HTML Basics video uh, where I'm showing you the basics of HTML5. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about paragraphs and some of the block level and inline level tags. So uh, let's jump right into it. So you can see here that we have in our HTML we have three clear paragraphs. This is how we want it to look. But over here the browser is rendering it uh, all as one big long sentence, right? It's not putting any sort of breaks. It's not even uh, it's not even considering these two lines that I've added up here at the top as a break. Uh, there is a way to put breaks, uh, line breaks, into uh, HTML very easily. And remember from a previous video that HTML was created in order for scientists to be able to share their research. So um, many of the things that you can do in a, a written report or a research report you're able to do inside of HTML uh, just with the basic tags. So uh, let's look at the most fundamental tag. And the most fundamental tag is called the paragraph, or sometimes you'll see it referred to as the P tag. So it looks like this. It starts like this, and then it ends with a slash P. So this is the paragraph tag. And so we're going to take this, and we're going to, you can actually see Let's see if it added. I, th I believe it added a space up here just because of that. Let's look. Yeah, it did. So you can see here there's it's hugging the very top and the very left. But when I uncomment this and I put the P up there, you can see there's a little bit of space up there whenever the uh, whenever the page refreshes. <clears throat> You'll see a little bit. There it is. So it adds a little bit of space there, even though there's nothing inside the p tags. Um, so we know that that p tag is going to work and give us some space. So let's just add that to the very beginning of this paragraph. And then we're going to add it to the end of this paragraph. And you can see here that it adds space. Let's take this one away. Internet's a little bit slow this morning, but it will add space in between, and there's an automatic uh, two-line break, right? So it'll go down once, and then twice, and then start the next paragraph after that. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, add that to our second paragraph as well, and then you'll be able to see how our paragraphs are taking shape. Okay, so now you see that there's a line break here. A paragraph break and then another paragraph break and then this one you can't notice because it's the last one uh, but you should still do that as well you can look up here too and you can see that there's also a line break on the top so it adds a little bit of padding to the top and it adds a little bit of padding to the bottom and it's essentially just one um, the size of your of your text here it adds a line of padding right here, or a, a length of padding um, to the bottom. So, so it's adding padding to the top and to the bottom, and that gives some space to each of the paragraphs. Okay, so now we have our three paragraphs. Each of them has space on the tops and the bottoms. And this is how you create a paragraph structure. And remember in a previous video we had talked about uh, headings. So. If you take, <clears throat> say, a heading one, and you wrap some text inside of a heading one, then you'll start to see, uh, you know, this would be like a headline or a header for a section of a website, and then you have the text, right? You can see how everything is starting to get uh, separated out, and then if you came down and you did is something like an h2 which is a little smaller and then if you came down and did an h3 you can see how the document begins to take a, a particular shape right so you have headings and main headings subheadings and then um, 
you know you have a smaller one it's still bold it's still separated from the paragraphs but you can see how the headings um, how they go down in size and in hierarchy just like you would see in a normal uh, paper or academic paper or even the newspaper sometimes whenever they have headings so uh, so this is how we create those so it's using the P tag and the P tag is also called the paragraph tag alright so the paragraph tag is what we call a block level element now I have not tested this but I'm I'm gonna test it right now and see um, so if we look at this you can see that it takes uh, whenever we hover over that then it is a full block you can see the colored part the blue part is the actual paragraph text the kind of orangey peachy part is the padding that I told you that uh, when the browser renders the P tag it automatically puts some padding on the top and the bottom so it separates it from the content that's above it and below it and does this automatically so this is something that the browser decides uh, when it reads a P tag it adds that space uh, in order to create the illusion of paragraphs <laughs> and um, it's called a block level tag because we can it's like a block it's like a big rectangle Right, each of these is a block level tag because it acts like a block of text, a whole block of text. Okay, so let's remember that, and we'll go back and we have another tag, and uh, this tag is called a span. So the way that we do that is the word span, and then we do slash span and then inside this span tag we can put anything okay so well, let's write something distinctive so that we can really see it now a span tag is what we call an inline tag so we have we have a block level tag and then we have an inline level tag okay so P is a block level and span is what we call an inline tag and inline tags what they do is they don't have any space around them so a span tag just inserts itself into wherever you are and it just kinda it looks just like it does in this paragraph so you can see here we've added this in and it doesn't do anything different so our span tag is right here um, if we had done this is kind of a crazy example but if you wanted to create one with space in it then you would have put a P let's see how it renders it okay it doesn't render it very well if you wanted one with space you would have put a P there and then you would have just created a whole new paragraph right like that and then it would have created a, a tag with some space to it but that's not what we want what we want is we want to add some text into the flow of the document and so when we want to add text into the flow of already a paragraph then we use the word span and it just inserts it <clears throat> if it's going to insert it or not it just inserts it into the flow of the document instead of taking it out and putting it on its own new line okay so it's a little bit tricky to deal with maybe in your mind uh, but just know that this is what we call an inline level element and then a P or an, a heading tag is a block level element now these things become a lot more important whenever you're dealing with uh, CSS when you go to style things so if we wrap this text here around a span tag then we can go into our CSS and we can actually change this so you know we could change the span and the color to red
and now we see that we've we've only changed this uh, part of it. So there's some some kind of cool things that you can do with spans. You can add things like uh, icons and that type of thing that are in line, as opposed to having to create a block. And then with the blocks, it it becomes harder to like put them next to each other. So a span tag can come in handy. Uh, whenever you want to single out some text in the flow of the document without making it its own um, space within the document. So, okay, that's the best I know how to describe uh, the span tag. And let's look at a couple of other <clears throat> um, inline level tags. One is called the uh, bold, so we have some formatting choices that we can make. And to make something bold, you just use a B tag not a P but a B and so it's a B and then it's slash B and now all of a sudden this uh, content here is going to be bold <clears throat> the refresh on this is a little bit slow this morning uh, so this tag here is going to be bold. Now there's also another tag and that tag is called strong. Now the difference between strong and bold is nothing except when the browser reads it or when Google and their robot comes along they're going to see two different <clears throat> they're going to see two different uh, versions of this bold now one is just going to look bold and then one is going to be bold and it's going to look bold too uh, so there's a big difference uh, semantically or um, maybe not even semantically but just in the idea of these two bold sentences there's a difference and the difference is um, that they both look bold but this one here the second one that's strong this one actually has more importance than this one does um, most people will tell you to just use strong for the bold because most of the time when you're bolding some content on a page you're trying to make people know that it's very important too so when you want it to look bold and be very important um, for the page, then you use the word strong. When you just want to bold something, uh, but you don't want it necessarily to have a lot of importance on the page, uh, more important than the regular text, then that's when you use this uh, B. Okay. So that is bold and strong. And then there's a similar thing that we can do with um, with italics so there's a way to italicize our words and the way that we make it italic is to use the I and italic just it means that it slants the text to the right and it makes for it visually gives it importance within the uh, within the document and then we also have similar to the way that strong works we have one called M E M which stands for emphasis and then slash E M and then <clears throat> when you want to italicize something but you don't want to give it a lot of importance you use the I tag and when you want to uh, italicize something and at the same time give it a lot of importance then you give it the M tag. I apologize for the browser here it's really just not working very well but you can see it up here uh, when I refresh so you can see here that um, here is the regular uh, italicized content and then here is the emphasized content and <clears throat> the italic content is not as important as this content here that's emphasized even though they both look the same it's the same thing as with our bold and our uh, strong tags up here okay so uh, it's a subtle difference but it is a difference 
and um, it's something that uh, it's kind of one of the fine things of HTML5 but you have an opportunity to kind of shape how the page is seen uh, especially with the, what are called robots or bots that come by and they catalog your page so they'll tell you you know you can tell them hey this is really important <clears throat> I have one more tag that I want to show you and that tag is called small a small does probably exactly what you think and it makes the text small so it automatically applies um, a sort of small text you can see that it's changed the size of the text this is the regular paragraph size and then it's made this text small you would use small in a sense of uh, uh, just to get a very quick um, I want to shrink this down and make this smaller or maybe you would use it on the text at the very bottom of the page uh, for the footer or for copyright information or something like that um, <clears throat> Uh, the small text here it's telling you that this text is going to be small now there are ways to do this with CSS so that you can make uh, all your p tags small um, so 0.5 rim and now it changes all of our p tags to a very small size you can see that so there's a way to do that with CSS and most people would probably tell you that CSS is the better way to do it um, but for our purposes just to teach you uh, some of the inline tags um, this is one that you need to know I occasionally use small even in production projects just because you want to get that small text there like that all the time and uh, once you put it in the code though it's it's there so if I wanted to change that text I would have to target uh, some of that text and I have to remove this and then I'd have to restyle it. it's just kind of an extra step <clears throat> okay uh, so these are um, our block level elements and our inline level elements and what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you um, I wanted to show you so we looked at the block and you can see the block it takes up uh, all the space across but when I roll over um, when I roll over my inline elements you can see that it doesn't it doesn't make a whole block of text right let's see do I have a span still I don't have a span let me just put a span of text <clears throat> in here and then you can see that when I roll over the span it doesn't take up a whole block of the screen it only takes up a small section of the screen so let's refresh that okay I put my span here and that's down in this paragraph okay and when I hover over the span you can see that when I go over the block you can see that it goes all the way across the page and if it were to have space up above and below or if it were to take up multiple uh, lines the lines would go all the way across the page but when I roll over the span tag it only takes up uh, the space that's given to it between the two span tags so this is a big difference um, it is it is easier to add space and padding between uh, block level elements and spans are just meant to be inserted into the flow of the document but a block le level element can separate out from other parts of the document so this is um, really important as you begin to move along and especially when you get into CSS but I just wanted to let you know that there are certain types of elements on the page um, hopefully that's clear if it's not clear uh, you can just leave a comment down below in the uh, comment section and I'll be happy to try to clarify it for you maybe I can come up with a better way uh, of explaining it um, so that you can understand it but this is the basics of, of creating paragraphs and then inside of paragraphs doing some basic formatting uh, with um, inline elements like uh, bold and italic and small 
right, thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video.